tall, strong hitting American with a big serve. And uh, I remember from a couple of years ago here, Liz, she came through qualifying and got into the round of 16. So. Just yeah, she's had um, both both her best Grand Slam results have come here mm. and at the US Open. So to work your way through qualifying and to get to the 16s of a Grand Slam, you're playing some good tennis. She's she's had wins over players like Petkovic and Nicolescu, Strakova. I mean, she's a quality player. Mm. So, mm. but the reality is, Alan, you know those results they just stay on the computer for a year, don't they? And then they fall off. And so, unless you replace those good results, those those two mm. good results of Grand Slams came in 2017. So, unless you replace those results with the same or better, yes. then the reality is that your ranking drops. Yes, and it's something that the uh, players are extremely conscious of, their rankings, because you live and die by your ranking, because that gets you main draw acceptor into the major tournaments and then the big tournaments around the tour. Yeah, it's hard not to focus on your ranking too much. Obviously, when you're high, you, you don't have to worry about getting into tournaments, mm. but certainly at this level it makes yep. a huge difference. The, uh, the coin toss clock on the side there. Um, so down to five minutes for the warm-up. Then at the end of the warm-up, we'll have one minute before. You have to be, uh, at the end of that one minute, you have to be in position, ready to play the first point. Um, other things, of course, it's 25 seconds between points. We'll also have the clock on the sides there to count that. Um, we do have off-court coaching. So that means that uh, you can talk to your coach, you can talk in between points, uh, change events, you can get up from your chair, and you can also go into the corner and talk to your coach uh, during the change events. Um, so you can talk if you're at the same end of the court. If you're at the other end of the court, it has to be signals. So they can, the coach can not shout uh, all the way across the court. Um, we do also, for, for this year, a new rule, it's one taller break per match. Um, also, the final set tiebreak. The final set tiebreak is 10 points, not 7 points. Any other questions? Well, he's answered a lot of questions for us, Liz, as well. Tails is the clock. <laughs> Yes, no shouting from the from one end of the court to the other. If you talk to your coach, they can't come onto the court. You can just go to where they are. Mm. Well, interesting. It's being trialled before, and it's only on trial here again at the Australian Open in the qualifying and the juniors. I would think a decision will be made by the end of the year as to whether on-court coaching is going to... Uh, take place. It already does on the women's tour and not on the men's. And I'm not a big rap for it, Liz. You might be. I'm, I'm not a big rap for it, but you know what, Alan? I don't think you can actually police coaching effectively. No. It's probably going to happen, so we may as well move on. And Correct. These as... girls could play doubles together. Look, they're wearing the same outfit. Yeah. <laughs> and both tall and, uh, and big hitters, as we have a look at uh, Jennifer Brady. not ranked high enough to get straight into the Australian Open, as we mentioned, but her best ranking is in fact number 60 in the world, and that was mm. back in October of 2017, where she had those two good results in Grand Slams at the US Open and here at the Australian Open, which was in actual fact her first main draw, so she really hasn't been playing Grand Slam tennis for that many years. No. Just two. Well, it's just 23 years of age, as we see uh, the chair umpire, as you mentioned, Thomas Sweeney from Australia. And we have uh, a large international contingent of umpires as well, and uh, these Grand Slams are such huge events, and the rewards are so great for the players. I mean, prize money's increased this year to $62 million for the whole event and I'm very pleased to see that a lot of the increase hasn't gone to the top but it's down in the first and second rounds of the main draw and in the qualifying so these players who've got just many expenses uh, as the top players mind you they mightn't stay at the same hotels but they've got the same sort of costs living costs and for them to receive a little bit more prize money I think is a great help uh, to their careers. I think your point's well made, Alan. I think when people look at tennis players, they think, oh, gee, you know, they're making millions of dollars a year. Well, there are a lot that are making millions of dollars, but there's also triple the amount that aren't. And, you know, the ladies' draw has been increased this year to 128, so that also is good because it gives more players more of an opportunity, not just to play qualifying, but to, you know, have an opportunity to get through qualifying and, and you know, 
play in the biggest one of the Three biggest minutes. events in the world. And they all have. There's very few people that travel by themselves as well. Um, you know, back in the day, you know, lots of people used to travel by themselves and you know maybe room together. But now, mm. even these ladies, they would have coaches. They'd have you know possibly two or three people with them. So that you know triples your expenses mm. again. So it's always in the back of your mind. I've got to go to Australia. Where can I get in? Where am I going to get the money back? And of course, the expenses are the same. So you have to play well. So there's quite a bit of pressure. Well, the winners of the men's and women's singles this year for $1 million dollars each. So uh, they just don't take a few rooms. They take a whole floor <laughs> at the hotel. Their entourage with the racket stringers and physios and uh, the manager and the coaches and the physical coach and the stats man and the wife and four kids, if you're right. <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Got the lot. You know, when I was playing, Martina really was the only person, Martina never oh, yeah. that, that had an entourage. And her entourage consisted of Mike Estep, who yep. was her coach, and possibly Barbara, which was who was Mark, Mike's wife. Yep. And that was about it. Mm. And so that was an entourage of about two. From time to time, people would come in. Well, there wouldn't be too many people here that wouldn't have... No four, five, six people. I'm talking about the players in the main draw. Yep. And certainly some would have more. So that really has been just a huge shift. And one of the reasons why is because the prize money, because you can afford to have people with you now. So we've got a five minute uh, warm up. And from the time the umpire goes through his uh, instructions there, which are a few quite a new ones, the players have got to be ready to play within uh, that five minute period, finish their warm up and then when they go back to sit down, have a drink and a final uh, towel down which seems to take forever uh, they've got one minute then to be ready to play otherwise it'll be a time violation which I think these two new rules are terrific because the players spend so much time fiddling around and having another drink and looking in their bag and doing all sorts of stuff so if they can get the matches on quicker and less delays, less wasted time the crowd the right are the going to appreciate it and so are our viewers more matches is what we want not more sitting around more tennis balls being hit mm. well we're just about all set there's a shot clock in the background which tells the players and, and now the umpire is helping them 30 seconds left in the uh, warm-up you can see it just left of screen there counting down that was from the one minute Players won't go over it. They'll get uh, good at doing it. Uh, a few complained, oh, well, you know, they're rushing us and all that sort of stuff. And someone like Nadal, I mean, you know, you can have your lunch before he gets ready to play. <laughs> but uh, they, they accept it and they'll uh, work it and uh, be no problem. So there we are. Now we're all set. So now we've got a minute before yes. the ball needs to be struck. That's it. Yep. And so they've still got the... They've still got They've had the five minutes and they've still got this one minute to have a last drink, etc. And a sit down. <laughs> but it ends up to be a fair amount of time, so the match was called for 10 o'clock uh, local time here in Melbourne, and it's already 12 past, so we've, uh, you know, it's going to be 13 minutes of, uh, <laughs> before we've actually got started. So if you've got five matches on the day... Uh, that know, time adds up and accumulates during the day. That's an hour of uh, wasted time. Anyway, we're all set. This should be an interesting uh, first round of the women's qualifying for the 2019 Australian Open. We're looking forward to it. And Carmen Thandy will serve in the opening game. Did a good job there, Brady. On the return of serve, she tried to be aggressive and hit a big return, but 
She got herself a little bit out of position but managed to recover. So Carmen Thandy won a $25,000 event in Hong Kong last year which helped her ranking. Once again, it's that big forehand, isn't it? You can just see Brady, whenever she has the opportunity, that's the shot that she's going to be looking to hit. And he's really going to need to get a high percentage of first serves in. Well, she's in a spot of bother here in her opening service game. As I said, I think she'd be a little nervous. She's got one of the tougher players to play against. Number 16 seed in this qualifying. Game just break. pulled it wide. First game. But she's only 20 years of age and she's on the way up. Most of her tennis has been played on the, uh, the secondary tour, if you like, and uh, the ITF oh. events. But winning that event in uh, Hong Kong was a big help. She's now ranked 206. And there is a big adjustment between the ITFs and and that next jump that needs to be make, made to the regular tour. And, you know, sometimes that's seamless and other times it just takes a little bit of time to realise what's required and having matches like this every week, more physically and mentally demanding. So it's all a learning curve at this age. Jennifer Brady to sit. One love. Fifteen luck. Oh, good depth there. So she started well, hasn't dropped a point yet. Also got a shot clock of 25 seconds, which counts down in between points. Got to serve within 25 seconds. That's a good weapon, First isn't it? That big forehand. Oh, she's got time. The movement is good. She sets herself. All set up by a nice wide serve. And she'd feel good too, Jennifer Brady, about coming back to a place where she's had good results in the past. Forty left. Big first serve. Well, that's, as you mentioned, that's the style of the game. Big serve, big forehand. It's very much the modern style. You need to have a finishing shot in the game these days. Forty fifty. Oh, well, she's on the board. Just a sigh of relief there. A little nod of encouragement to herself. And well read there for that first serve. She picked it, was on it quickly. Well, that's one way to play against someone who's hits big is to hit big also, isn't it? And uh, nice return. Good pace of shot. Game break. Brady leads by two games to left. Oh, good solid start by the American. One of these matches that the players play in the qualifying, they wouldn't have played against their opponents before. And maybe not know too much about them. But There's not too many secrets on the tour after a while, is there? <laughs> there there's probably more in qualifying but uh, once you get into the tour, not too many secrets. Lots of coaches are around to 
provide information on everybody. Lovely depth there again. Horses the short ball. Look at the movement here from Brady. She knows exactly what she wants to do. She gets into position early. Very effective forehand. Fifteen. body serve there. She has a nice action on a mm. serve, Alan. I yeah, it's good. really like it. I mean, the ball toss is very high, so when it gets windy, she may have problems there, but she creates good pace. Yeah, it's a good overall from the chair because the mm. the vision of the lines person was obstructed by Brady. So putting herself in a hole though, that double fault. As I said, just struggling to really get into the match yet against a much more experienced and uh, credentialed opponent. There's that high ball toss, Liz. Play in Australia, you're going to get a lot of windy days. Mm -hmm. That it will be a bit of a problem for it. All our major cities are on the coast, which is where all the big tournaments are, and hence we get a fair bit of wind. Game break. Well, that's a double break for Brady Jennifer leads Brady. Three, three, three loves, she leads first set. She's struggling to come to terms with, uh, with the power of Brady at the moment. Thandy is, she's uh, been forced back. She's miss hitting a couple of shots. So hasn't quite found her range or a rhythm yet. Well, and Thandy, you know, she's a tall girl and she's got long levers. So for the legs to get moving and the arms, you know, the backswing on both ground strokes and you need a little bit of time and mm. time's been taken away from it by Brady so far in this match. Qualifying, 128 draw, both for uh, men and women. So you've got to win three matches to get into the actual uh, main draw. And then the rewards are, are great there as, as far as prize money is concerned and possible points and ranking improvements. It's all so important for these players. 15 left. And also, once you get to the main draw, Alan, you're playing well. Mm. So anybody that plays a qualifier that's already in the main draw, they're aware, very aware that you know, that player that they're playing against has won three matches. Thirty love. Well, there it is again, the one two punch, the serve and the forehand.
14.15. Good rally from her there, but at 40 love down, she needs to get the earlier points in the game. When she's getting a couple of points, they're coming when she's really way down in the game and it's not a big help. leads by four games to left. Well, couldn't ask for a better start. Seeded 16. This qualifying. And 20-year-old Carmen Thandy needs to get the early points on her service game or any of the games. She's falling behind early and then struggling to get into the game at all. So she needs a couple of early points here. Love 50. Yeah, the hat has come off, Andy, hasn't it? And uh, you just saw her after she missed that first serve just to have a quick look up at the sun. It's 10.30 uh, local time, so that sun's going to be there or thereabouts probably for about the next hour. She's going to have to adjust the ball toss if necessary. Love this. But again off to a, a slow start on the game and finds herself in trouble. At Love 30. Just trying to, just overplaying a little there. That was a deep shot and she tried to play maybe a bit too forcing shot herself. She's just rushing it a little bit. Love 40. Again, break points. Fifteen forty. Well, first good pace on the, the serve. Yeah. yeah, there is good pace. Big flat one out wide. Brady leads by five games to live. Even though I'm not a huge fan of on-court coaching, I'm a little bit surprised possibly that Thandy, you know, wouldn't go over to a coach. And yeah. it mightn't be a, even a technical point that she's asking him, but it, he may just be able to offer her some kind of guidance as to, okay, well... To try, try to get and her to settle down. Or correct, something. Yeah. correct. So and she hasn't done it yet, but... She's entitled to go over to a coach and just have the conversation. Yeah, sometimes it's not just about the tennis. Obviously, she's been completely outplayed here by Jennifer Brady. But uh, sometimes your coach can just settle you a little bit and give you some perspective. That's a bit yeah. as evidenced by the actual scoreboard when we see the points won. Five points only for uh, Time. Carmen. So we've only been playing 16 minutes in this first set. And Thandy just hasn't been allowed to uh, settle down into this match. She's had one good serve and a good forehand, but basically the opponent is too strong with the serve and the forehand from the other end is forcing and not giving her enough time. 
and then she's overplaying a little herself. She's uh, anxious, and that's the five love scoreline. Fifteen love. And then, of course, what happens is the thought process is just not there. Obviously, you know, you go out before this match and you have a game plan, but that is just getting pushed to the side now for Thandy because she's probably so focused on the fact she's won so little points. Thirty left. Well. Gee, even the left cord's <laughs> going Brady's way. start to panic a little when you when you are on the receiving end of a score line like this because it all seems to just pass in a blur correct that's why i think you know asking the coach even if it just mm. takes a little bit of time to go through that process of asking the coach So two set points. Saves one. Game and first set break. So in rapid fire time, six, six love for Jennifer Brady. About as short a set as you get, Liz. 19 minutes. Very disappointing for young Carmen. She's 20 years of age and, as we've said, not experienced at this level. It's the qualifying, but uh, it's still pretty tough. Look at that. Just a handful of points won by Thandy. All these are just going to favour Brady, as you would expect in a six-love set that goes for 19 minutes. Really wasn't in any sort of trouble. Good first serve percentage. Almost the perfect set. Mm. Three winners, three unforced errors. Well are allowed a toilet break in a match so uh, I'm not sure desperate to go at this stage after 20 minutes but if she, maybe it's a little bit of just to slow things down a little and uh, see if she can't regroup and come back and uh, start again. Yeah I think it's really important too Alan when, when something's not working to be able to have the ability to possibly go to another tactic that you do well and um, obviously, Thandy is just being completely outplayed, but yeah. I think, you know, we don't see as much variety in tennis these days as, as back in the day. That's why someone like Ash Barty, who mm. has good variety, so when something's not working or, the, you know, the way you play might really suit the way that your opponent likes to 
have an opponent play. So you have to be able to, you know, have something a little bit different that you can do, whether it's to hit a slice or bring your opponent in or change the pace of the ball or, or something that upsets your opponent's rhythm. But it's very difficult if you don't have that other B game to go to. Indian camp that we just saw look a bit uh, despondent about it, which you would. Well, they'll be looking for an improved second set as well, uh, Carmen, but uh, it's hard to see where it's going to come from, as you said, because what's she going to go to? Uh, if she could get a few more of those good first serves in. And it would draw a couple of shorter replies and she might be able to get on top early in the rally. 11 unforced errors we saw in the stats. She, she needs to cut down some of those. But I think she's pretty nervous though at the start mm. there. I mean, her feet aren't moving like you do. When you get nervous, your feet feel so heavy. And uh, you don't seem to be able to make the little adjusting steps to get into position. And she's quite a few of her shots are off centre hits. They're slightly miss hitting the ball which is another sign that you're just a, a little tentative. And she's come to the net twice and, and hasn't been successful on either of those occasions. So, you know, maybe if she... I mean, she has to try something, Yeah, doesn't she? Mm. Yeah, you know, if she doesn't try something different, she's going to lose. So, um, yes, you have to be able to have that somewhere in your repertoire, but she's just not getting the time, Alan, as you said. Someone like Jennifer Brady, who has had terrific results on hard courts. The best of the slams at the Australian Open and the US Open has beaten good players to get into the second week of both those events. And she's much more experienced and she's not going to let this match slide early in the second set. No. She, she's going to keep the pressure on, keep doing what she's doing. So it's really up to Thandy to find something that Jennifer Brady is going to struggle with but it's difficult after you've lost the first set six love well, it's a fairly lengthy break uh, i'm wondering uh, i mean there are toilet facilities right here and on yeah they, three, she, she wouldn't would, have gone back to she wouldn't the have gone back room. to the locker room yeah, well she? you wouldn't have thought so unless she wanted to change her outfit but yeah. then if she wanted to change her outfit she should have bought one with her and yeah being able to change it closer to the court oh, she's back Okay. Well, let's hope from her viewpoint that she can settle down and get these couple of these early points. As I said, she's falling behind Time. early, love 15, love 30 on every game, and that's putting her under pressure. She's rushing it a little. So let's see how she can go in the second set. She'll be serving first. Second set, Tandy to serve. Yeah, she's got the opening point. Something to build on. Thirty left. Look. Well, That's a good change up. Mm. Nice wide serve. That's what she was looking for, a good start, a positive start, Give us, one love she leaves, second, second set. set.
couple of mishits in this game from Brady, and that was one of them on the return of serve. Just let it come onto it just a little bit too much and ran out of space. That's the good service action. And jogging up and down and looked a lot more positive there at the end of the game and uh, also has the change here. So she's hoping that that good start is the forerunner of better things in this second set. So Brady a set up, serving love one. Fifteen. Has the advantage of new balls here, Brady. So they go through the air just a little bit faster. Australian Open is now using Dunlop tennis balls, not just at the Australian Open, but throughout the summer here. Thirty left. They just fly through the air just a little bit faster when they're new. Ball changes at seven games and then every nine after that throughout the match. Well, you mentioned a miss hit to finish the game for Brady. There was another one there that was slightly not timed off the forehand and it really just sat up. And a good finish by uh, Thandy. Oh, a little bit unfortunate there for Thandy because she'd hit a good return an aggressive return and it had Brady pulled wide. Brady did a good job of getting over there and just a little bit disappointing on the next forehand from the receiver. Nicely constructed rally from her there. Good, good bounce on that second serve, Liz. And she gets it up high. There's good margin for error on it. It's, it's pretty impressive. One all. Settling down now into the match a little. Footwork was better there, the timing. Nice little adjusting steps there to make room. Game 
Tandy. Well, a new player in this uh, second set. Tandy leads Tandy. Tandy. She leads 2-1. We talked about what it does to you to lose the first set in 19 minutes and only winning a handful of points. But conversely, down the other end, Jennifer Brady's probably sitting here thinking, gee, you know, I'm not too sure how many times she's won a first set in 19 minutes. <laughs> so she would be thinking, gee, you know, what exactly happened there? I better make sure that I keep doing whatever it is that mm. I just did for the last 19 minutes. And you know, she, we had that long break, didn't we, where she mm. really had to think about it for quite some time with Andy had a bathroom break. Time. Oh, things looking up for Carmen Thandy. They're two good service games, and in particular that game, the footwork was better and found a range off the forehand. So Brady now knowing that she's going to have to work a little harder to win this second set, and certainly she had to in the first. One, two. Well, I don't think Dandy's heard the call of let first no. serve. She thinks she's won the point, so she's gone to the other side of the court. I must say, I thought it cleared the... By a long way. Way over the net. I don't know where that came from. Fifteen left. Nicely played. Once again, when she gets time to set for that forehand, she's hit it well in this second set so far. Heavy serve there, 177 k's. And with a bit of kick, kick on it as well. Major part of her game, Jennifer Brady. Uh, 40-50. Uh, she'd worked herself nicely into that point. Andy, and then she'd be disappointed with that miss hit. serve in this uh, second set much closer early on in the set let's see if uh, Carmen Thandy can continue with this it's good so that break that she took certainly uh, helped her maybe I don't know if uh, Brady just relaxed a little just sitting down there she would have preferred obviously to keep the momentum going that she'd created and she had to wait about six minutes or so anyway two all 
lovely. Gee, that's a bad miss, yep. Andy. You know, Alan, we talked about it so far in this match, setting the tone for the game and, you know, good first serve, easy ball in the middle of the court. To overplay that is not a good way to start this particular game. That's a let off for Brady. There's a fine line, isn't there? Yeah, there There's is. a fine line between trying to play aggressively and going for what you think is the right shot without making the unforced error. Fandy just wasn't in the position to hit the type of shot there that she wanted to hit. Well, it's just showing her inexperience, isn't it? She's too keen to hit the good shot too early. And she'll learn that, that she needs just a little bit more uh, patience. particularly off the forehand, which she uh, believes is a, a weapon. She did a good job there of setting up the point. She hit three or four forehands mm. before she uh, won the point. She didn't try to hit the winner off the very first one. So, so she's learning really, quickly. Mm, that was really <laughs> playing tennis, that point, wasn't it? it wasn't Constructing just hit, the point. Yep, yeah, wasn't just whacking the ball around. opportunity was there to hit the winner she had the, th the short ball but just as you've said not quite enough margin on the shot and luckily it caught the tape and then just fell wide but it didn't need to probably be that good and at 1530 she's now looking at uh, a couple of break points against her saves one but it just shows you the importance of some points I and mean, every points you're keen to win but some are more important than others and at 15:30, when she overplayed to bring up the two break points she was a bit more controlled there to save one Good first serve. of margin on this winner good use of the court
Mm. Oh. Here there's a let off. Brady had run around the backhand and, and hit the aggressive forehand, which we've seen her do this whole match. And then Thandy really didn't need to go for the big winner. Just anywhere near there on that side of the court. And even if she didn't win on that particular shot, she would have won on the next shot. Just going for too much. Well, there's a challenge. I think it's looked wide to yeah. me, so. Oh. No overrule. So an ace it is, and game point again for Thandy. Well, what an effort in that game from 1540 down. She fights back and leads 3 2. Well, she has a little bit of an advantage in this set, doesn't she, Thandy? Because she's serving first. So. If she can manage to hold serve, it just puts a little bit of pressure on Brady, you know, to hold and then to level things up as this set progresses. We thought maybe in that last game there may have been a challenge from Brady, but at this particular stage, during the qualifying of the Australian Open, there's no challenge set up. There's no Hawkeye on this court. So once the tournament starts, as I would think that <laughs> they should have it here Time. during qualifying. Well... One of the coaches from the Mara Tuglu. Academy, of course, uh, looks after Serena Williams. So here, though, on serve, 2-3, set as uh, the match has tightened up. And a very good effort from Tandy to hold serve from 15.40 down. 15 left. in the body language also from Thandy. She's really on her toes. She's looking up at her coaches and that, and she's a few fist pumps. She feels she's right back into this now. Forty-fifty. Well. That one was close too, wasn't yeah. it? No Hawkeye for the qualifying, but I believe in the main draw starts, the whole 16 courts are going to have Hawkeye, which is fantastic. That's the first time. Oh, that's good. Well, not 
More energy about her play now and enthusiasm. You live by the sword and you die by the sword. In the first set, these weren't making the mark, but doing a better job in the second set, isn't she, Tandy? 10 winners, in fact. In this set. Game great. Three games up. Well, I think we'll see Jennifer Brady make a big effort in these next couple of service games. She can see that her opponent's starting to play better, starting to get a bit more confidence, and she'll be keen to try to break through here and finish it off before things get uh, a bit more uncomfortable. dangerous. Uncomfortable. Yeah, uncomfortable, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> So good second set this now developing. Three all. Love 15. Point of the match. Uh, best point of the match for sure. Good hitting. Good retrieving. Good use of the court. Brady guessed right here. She stayed back there but just couldn't quite get anything on that one. Well, she was relieved when she guessed right <laughs> there. There wasn't much in there when she let that one go. You know, there's a shot right there. You, you know, you, you bought forward. The ball doesn't get up quite as high. You just can't play that shot like you play every other ground stroke that comes nice and heavy towards you. You have to take a little bit off it, maybe slice it. I'm not too sure if she has that shot, but that's what was required there. Jean, in the blink of an eye, mm. you, she's in trouble on serve. Well, we're expecting Brady to try to uh, put a bit more pressure on this game to try to finish off the match, but she's been given a bit of assistance. Double fault, and as you said, that missed backhand. So Brady with two chances here. Bravely saves the first. Didn't try and go for the outright winner there, did she? She just made sure she didn't make the error.
Deuce. Well, Brady had 1540 in the last service game. Couldn't break through with some good play from her opponent, as is the case here. the benefit of a good first serve. She's done well, hasn't she, Sandy, to get back into this game. Not easy to hit a winner from that position of the court. She's earned herself a game point. Game time. Wow. And now the game from 15.40 down. Fantastic effort. She leads, leads four, three. four games to three. She's showing a bit of fight here. Mm, and the body language is, mm. I mean, it's no surprise that, you know, you lose the first set in 19 minutes and the body language really wasn't that great. And then she had that long break. And since she's come back, the body language has been so much better. And Jennifer Brady, you can feel that down the other end of the court as well when you're opponents obviously starting to play better they they look like they've got more of a game plan even though she has you know to get to the position of 1540 she played a, a couple of shots that were not all that great but since then has really done a much better job that's pretty impressive one winner in the first set 12 in seven games in the uh, second Brady's just staying along her normal amount there. So it's all about calm and Sorry. handy, though, this set. I mean, living dangerously. Handy. She's been down 15-40 uh, the last two service games, but really has deserved to win the games because she's been the playmaker and has come up with the shots, particularly off her forehand. And you see getting a honest toes moving forward positive body language and she's ahead it's three four 15 left. Oh, 187 k's that had a bit of zip on it that one caught behind wasn't yeah it? A rising delivery <laughs> that one got a call go her way or earlier in that game but it didn't mm -hmm. he looked up at the umpire and he signaled that the ball was good it didn't miss and she kept her composure and much more positive looking and determined Shout of encouragement there again as she looked for her favourite shot. Well, it's really all or nothing, isn't it, when you <laughs> decide to hit this shot?
court. So, great chance here. right at the body, Brady. just got caught, didn't she, there, Thandy? It was just behind her and just pressing. Shot selection once again has let her down, has done a much better job in the second set, but that was a huge point. Game Brady. Well, hanging on there, Jennifer Brady. Four games on. Didn't think we'd be saying that after the first set, that she'd be hanging on. But, but yeah, once again, though, Alan, wasn't it? It was the shot selection and that fine line for Thandy between hitting an aggressive winner and making the unforced error. She had opportunities in that game, didn't she? Mm. Well, it's a tight set of tennis because both players have had the opportunities. And we're at four all. Oh, interesting shot down the middle of the court there that uh, jammed Brady. That one there. Good depth though. Created the opportunity from the short ball on the next shot. Fifteen. 
must say, I wasn't expecting this one to go up the middle of the court as well. I thought <laughs> she would have gone one way or the other. But good enough to win the point. Fifty. Oh, much more straightforward service game coming up here. After her previous two, that she's down fifteen forty. So if she can escape with a comfortable one here as we uh, get to the business end of the set, that would be a big bonus for her. Got it. Game, Tandy. So 5-4 for Carmen Tandy. A great effort from her in this second Tandy set. Leads by five games to four. So it's not a crisis time for Jennifer Brady, but certainly it's a reasonably tight situation now in this second set. Particularly compared to the first set. <laughs> Tennis, it can be such a game of momentum and uh, certainly Jennifer Brady in the first set had it all her way, really didn't have to do all that much. Thandy was the one that just came out and just was nervous and just never worked her way into the set at all. We had the long break, the bathroom break and since then has done a good job, Thandy, of really getting on the job here. I mean, she's won ITF events so you know, no one gets into a qualifying draw of a Grand Slam without being a good player, and she's done a good job of turning this match around so far. Not an easy thing to do. So Brady serving, a little bit of pressure on her here at 4-5. Good move. Seeing that she had her opponent in trouble here, Jennifer Brady, knowing that she was going to be on the full stretch, Thandy, and moving forward, volley into the open court, well played. encouragement there. He'd be happier with this set though. That was all Brady's that point, wasn't it? And she came forward and just that moment of indecision it ended up getting quite awkward for her. She had to run back and hit the high lob. But then as you say, Alan, Andy just running out of patience instead of resetting.
game break. New balls, please. Five games off. Well, a bit too eager in that game, I think, to try to finish it off and went for too much again on that last shot. And the backhand, when there'd been a good rally, she tried to change and go down the line. So just uh, Brady using her experience here and not making too many errors and absorbing some of the big shots, but benefiting from some of the errors from her opponent. But a much more competitive set of tennis, this one. Five all. New balls. Love 50. Yeah, it just was jammed on both of those forehands. Thandy was. Solid tennis here from Brady. Just drawing a few errors from her opponent who's just, she just panics a little bit at times. Brandy hasn't had the same uh, level of uh, tournament play as her opponent. It's 20 years of age on the way up. Just rushing at it just at this critical stage. 15 40. Saves one. Come back twice in this set from uh, 1540. Can she do it from Love 40? <laughs> 30 well, 40. Two good first serves. Jennifer Brady will serve Brady for the match. Brady leads by six games to five. Good solid tennis there from Brady on that uh, point. Two good first serves that stopped her from breaking, but she made sure she didn't make an error in that third break point. And it was the unforced error that, you know, when, you've, when you're tall and you've got long arms and long legs, very often... The, the hardest part of hitting a shot is getting into position. And this lady here, when the ball comes straight at her, she just doesn't get out of the way enough or quickly enough to give herself time to make the swing at the ball. So very good on the stretch and very good when she has time to set. But when the ball is straight at her quickly, she has a hard time getting out of the way and giving herself enough room. And that's what happened on that last point and then Tight. a couple of points in that previous game 
But as you said, Alan, she will learn. Well, she sounds, it sounds she's got some real talent. Uh, some mm -hmm. of her shot making, a serve and a forehand, and her competitive spirit's been terrific, really. Look, and she's still going through some uh, forehand practice and backhand swings here, getting her feet moving. She's not done with yet, but it's a fine effort from considering where she was after set one. That is Jennifer Brady serving for the uh, match here in this first round of the qualifying. Too good. Love 15. Beautiful forehand there. Had decided early the type of shot she wanted to hit. As she gets into position, lots of little steps were played. Time the other direction. Decided early once again and up the line with the forehand. Good variety on that side. Well, it wasn't like it was a weak second serve, so it was <laughs> really good footwork from her. And that forehand starting to do some real damage. 15 first. when it's good to have a big first serve, isn't it? You're trying to serve out a match against an improving opponent. You get down love 30 and you can hit two unplayables to get it back to 30 all. Gee, she'd like that one back again. An opportunity. 30 all, second serve. And that brings up the first match point. so far out of court there. Good effort to just retrieve the ball. The bravely saved though by Thandy. Gee, she wasn't just moving the ball around. She went for it. Deserved to win the point. Advantage Brady. Too good a serve though. Again that weapon. Brings up her second match point. that shot. I think she felt the serve might have been good enough to have won the point in the match and was a bit surprised when it was rebounded quickly at her. It wasn't quite prepared. Advantage break. Almost exactly the same <laughs> serve again. Andy not completely sure that it was in, but I think it was good. Yep. 
match point number three. A server saved her this game from Love 30 down. And it's put her in this uh, match winning position. Oh. Thought she had it. Mm. Game set As at this Brady. time, Jennifer Brady Two threw in low. straight sets. Six low, seven five. And Liz, it turned out to be a pretty good uh, match in the second set. It did, didn't it? Once, um, once Thandy, that bathroom break and she got settled, we saw a lot more of her weapons and big serve, big forehand. And, and uh, Jennifer Brady, she had to produce her very best tennis to win this match in the second set. Good serving. She's got a lot more experience than her opponent. And just in those crucial moments, even on that last, very last point, instead of going for the kick serve out wide, she went the, for the one down the middle, and that's what drew the error. So we'll have a quick look at the stats. Uh, total points won, 64 to 45. First serves in that dropped as the match went along for Brady that was a little bit higher than that but when she really had to produce the big serve she did unforced errors look at that though 33 most of those coming in the first set from Thandy did a better job with the winners 21 to just 10 for Brady but Brady was just a lot more solid just more experienced and Thandy will go away from this match I think thinking that you know, she's got a lot to work on, but won't be... I mean, she'll be disappointed, but, you know, there's a lot of game there, isn't there, well, to I work on, Well, I think when Alan. you lose a match 6 love 7 5 and you hit 21 winners, I mean, you've really shown that you've got some weapons in your game, particularly that uh, forehand. And as you suggested, once she improves a little bit of her footwork uh, around uh, when the ball comes down the middle, she's a tall, gangly young player, and uh, I think she's got a player, a player with... Uh, some good potential, but not today. She was against the experienced Jennifer Brady, who looks pretty relieved to have got through this match in straight sets on court three. So Brady through to the second round. Six love, seven five. <laughs>